Hello. I thought I'd try something different. I just came back from the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Fest, going through my little stack of business cards and looking at all of the artists who were showcasing at A2CAF. I decided to check out Lucy Bellwood's blog and I found a feature that she does called Ramblings. It was a thing that she started last year, I believe, but it's kind of a podcast. She just hits the record button and talks into a microphone for, I don't know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes about whatever is on her mind. And there are other artists who were inspired to do the same sort of thing, uh, which whom she names in her blog. So, I mean, if you're interested in checking that out, Lucy, <clears throat> lucybellwood.com. And I was like, I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> I wanted to borrow it because I do want to be more honest and open in video form, but I don't have the energy or bandwidth to edit video or audio super extensively, especially since now I have two jobs. I work full time running my business in the studio and I have a part time job at a Dollar General down the road from me. Look, I'm not excited about working at Dollar General. It's a job of convenience. It's going to serve me until I'm either saved up enough or they do something to piss me off. We'll see how long that lasts. I'm anticipating anywhere between three to six months. We'll see what happens. So I wanted to actually talk a bit and be transparent about the last couple of shows because I had been waffling back and forth about whether to do conventions more or not. And I'll get into what I've decided later. Part of the reason I'm thinking about it is because full transparency, Be Excellent Festival of Games was a real miss for me. It was not the first show that had a big loss. Um, I would say Lewisburg Comic Con was probably the biggest waste of time as far as a convention goes. Even Put and Play, as legendary as Put and Play was, at least there were some good stories that came out of that. Lewisburg Comic Con was just a waste of a weekend when I went last year. It would have better served me to just do free RPG day in town instead of going to Lewisburg Comic Con. This year, I kind of, I don't feel angry that I went to be excellent festival of games. I do feel like they were overcharging for their tables because they're a little event. This was only their second year running. Their attendance was Eh? I don't know what kind of promotion game that they were doing, whether it was just social media and promoting things on social media right now is it's not just hard. It's shouting into a void where nobody can hear you unless you spend the money, in which case three people will hear you. <laughs> so, yeah, between that and I'm not even sure what other promotions Be Excellent was doing, but the the audience turnout was not super duper high. Uh, I mean, there was attendance after like three o'clock, but it was a one day fest. It was running from 11 to six. And I paid $80 for a table there for a one day event, which is too much to me, um, especially for a local show. Um, it was $60 to reserve my spot and then $80 for an actual table. And at the end of the day, I made $180 in sales, which is not high. I've had better sales and turnout at free comic book day at Toledo Game Room. Uh, the first year that I showcased for a free comic book day at Toledo Game Room back in 2022, I want to say, I made like $500, which was fantastic. 
this year's free comic book day appearance at Toledo Game Room was not a $500 day, but it was close. It was somewhere between $350 and $450. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. And all of this is to say that sales have been eh this year for me. They picked up extraordinarily at A2CAF or the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Fest. I actually had a better two days at A2CAF than I did in three days at Awesome Con in Washington, D.C., which is really saying something because Awesome Con draws like 77,000 ish attendees every year that it runs. Its artist alley is huge. This year I went to Awesome Con and in three days I made, I think, 470. And at A2CAF I made 515. And A2CAF, I don't recall paying for a table at that spot. So all I was out was uh, splitting gas with my buddy Ben because Ben and I carpooled back and forth between Toledo and Ann Arbor during that weekend. Uh, ben crashed on my couch because he's based out of Columbus. And I was like, yeah, I'll have you crash on my couch. That way you don't have to pay for hotels or anything. Because I've crashed on his couch multiple times anytime that I've gone to Columbus for shows. So... It was, you know, I think it was fair. And I did help pay for parking on Saturday. Uh, Sunday is free parking in Ann Arbor. So, yeah, the expenses for A2CAF were actually really low. Um, Be Excellent Fest, not super great. I'm not sure that I'm going to go back to Be Excellent next year. Even though they are local, they're in town, I just don't think I'm going to do it. If I can get to A2CAF more frequently, hell yeah, I'm going to do that show more often. The hosts were also, like, really great. It was free attendance for everybody who walked through the door, because it was hosted at the Ann Arbor Library. More fests should be hosted at libraries, I think. Those are my favorite kind of shows. Uh, they also had a green room for guests and vendors, which was fantastic. They fed us for both days of the event. It was fantastic. They also had sparkling water, and I am a sparkling water bitch. I'll be transparent about that. I actually have a can of mango sparkling water waiting for me in the fridge. So, I think... What I'm going to do is not do any more comic cons and pop culture cons. The only exception is Rathacon down in Athens, Ohio. And I'm making an exception for them because I know the organizers. I've been working with them since they were a show. They're fantastic. I love the show. They love me. They really support indie creators and indie voices. I would definitely want to keep up the relationship that I have with Rathacon. So I'm not nixing them. I love these people. Uh, yeah, down in Athens, Ohio, or down in my old stomping grounds. <laughs> um, I just don't think I'm going to be doing any more shows like Be Excellent Festival of Games. Uh, definitely can't do... West Virginia Pop Culture Con or Gem City Comic Con. I went to Gem City last year and sales were awful in two days. Like, day one, fantastic sales day. Made like a hundred-ish dollars, if I remember correctly, and then day two, it was like 70, and I'm like, this was not worth coming to Gem City. <laughs> so, I did not go this year. Um, if I were able to table at SPX this year, obviously I'd go to SPX, but SPX is done by lottery and my name was not drawn for the lottery, either for tabling or the wait list, which is fine. I already did awesome con this year, um, but this does lead into my next point, which is I did rack up a fair bit of debt going to awesome con this year 
and racked up some debt doing a reprint run for The Legend of Jamie Roberts Volume 1 and The Case of the Wendigo because I shifted printers. I used to work with a printer based out of New York State, but I'm going to be switching over to uh, Comics Wellspring for the foreseeable future because they're just cheaper per book to print. I know that Comics Wellspring has been causing a lot of headaches for a lot of creators, um, especially for some folks based out of the Columbus, Ohio area, because trust me, I see the comments on the Columbus Cartoon Coalition Discord server. I'm an exec member. It's kind of my job to see those comments. So I'm aware of the headaches that Comics Wellspring has been causing for a lot of people lately. That said, my relationship with them has been okay so far. I've done like three or four books with them now and they've delivered on time good quality stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to keep working with them. They're also like cheaper per copy to print than the book printer that's based out of New York State who I had been working with. There's also fewer errors with Comics Wellspring. Um, so that's also going to make a big difference. I'm still sitting on misprint copies of The Legend of Jamie Roberts, Volume 1, that were caused by that New York-based printer. <laughs> um, I have, like, I think seven copies left of that first print run that have the misprint page in Chapter 2, and it drives me nuts every time that I see it. But I'm very close to getting rid of that entire stack. Soon they'll be gone. Thank God. Sometimes I'll just go across town and drop off those misprint copies into the little free library boxes. <laughs> because that's one way that I've found to help clear them out and make more room on my shelf. It's also just a good way to get the book out into the hands of readers, even if it is a misprint. Like... That's what I've been doing with those. But I do really like how the books are looking with Comics Wellspring, so I'm going to keep working with them. Still, though, I'm still paying off that order. <laughs> it's taking a while. Um, and that leads me to thinking about some of the financial issues that have been happening to artists that I've been talking with over the last, like, six months. Because it's not just me having these problems. I've been talking with Ben. I've been talking with a few other artists in the C3 Discord server. I've also been keeping tabs on the Starfish face on YouTube and some other creators on YouTube. And it's funny because I saw Starfish face's video about her time at Momocon because she went as a vendor at Momocon and she reported a $2,000 loss going to that show. Like, she made $2,000 less at that show compared to the previous year that she showcased at that event. And on the one hand, I'm like, boy, it must be really nice to have sales numbers that are over $1,000. Maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm like, if even Star is noticing their sales getting hit really hard and Ben is also having, you know, struggles and I'm having struggles and a lot of other creators are having struggles. There's a shift in the industry that's happening. I don't think it's just AI that's causing the problem. There's also the increased cost of printing. There's the issue of a lot of artists were really depending on social media to spread the word and... That's my air conditioner. As I'm recording this, this is like during the heat wave of June 2024, I am not turning the air conditioning off. You're just going to have to deal. So, oh, what was I talking about? Sales, sales and conventions and um, why it's so hard to make sales at conventions. But social media having changed their algorithms is, it's it stinks, but it's also something that I kind of saw happening. Um, Cory Doctorow has a great article about the inshittification of the internet, 
Highly recommend that you read it because it makes what social media is doing right now make a lot more sense. Because we're in the middle of watching the enchidification process come to peak fruition. And that's one reason why I'm shifting towards YouTube and blogging and just keeping up my website and my webcomics. Now, I would argue YouTube is not a social media site. It's a it's a platform for hosting content with some social media features stapled onto its side. You make a content, in this case video, and you post it up onto YouTube and YouTube hosts that video for you. That's what it does. It's not the same as Instagram. Uh, Instagram is someplace that you, you, you're supposed to like post the art and friends are supposed to see it. As we've seen, that's not the case anymore. Uh, again, in shitification of the internet, read that article. Um, it also does not surprise me that Instagram and the billionaire tech bros who run these social media platforms are dipping into AI because social media's ultimate aim is to keep you glued onto the platform by any means necessary. And that means spitting information and content at you constantly. Doesn't matter if it's misinformation or not, as long as it's content that keeps you scrolling. And social media platforms pay you in the form of likes and subscribers, not money. Like, I've heard legends that there are people who are paid through, like, creator funds on Instagram and TikTok. I don't believe those exist. <laughs> I think even if they did exist, those pools of funds were limited and disappeared real fast. Because social media's ultimate aim is not to pay you a living wage. Social media's ultimate aim is to keep you glued onto the site using gambler's fallacy and Skinner box logic to basically extract rent from you. In this case, attention. And I realized this a while ago, uh, even wrote a anti-attention economy manifesto about it. I'll have that linked in the description. Highly recommend checking it out and sharing it. I've made it a public Google Doc that you can share around. So I've quit social media. I'm just going back to YouTube, running a blog, and making my webcomics. And we're just going to keep it at that. I'm actually greatly enjoying that. It's giving me more space to doodle in my sketchbook, to have time away from both of my jobs, to just be with my creative thoughts, to craft, to read books. I've been catching up on a lot of the books that I got at A2CAF, having a great time with all those. Um, and I just finished... The 100 Demon, <clears throat> excuse me, the 100 Demon Dialogues from Lucy Bellwood. And then before that, I finished The Pirate and the Porcelain Girl. Fantastic lesbian love story. And there's a couple other books. I actually picked up Jessie Zabarski's Coming Back. I was really happy to see her at A2CAF because she and I went to school at the same time. I was a freshman and she was a senior at the time. And... It was good to see her in person again. That was fantastic. Um, if you haven't read her books, I highly recommend that you do. Witchlight is fantastic. She also does these little Instagram comics featuring a little bunny persona. And those are adorable and precious and you should read those. So it was good to see her. It was also good to see uh, Brandon Hawkins, creator of Autumn Wing, in person. Because he's in a couple of different Discord server servers that I'm a part of. Um... But I do see him a lot in the Heatsink Comics Collective, which is one that I participate in a lot. Um, I found out about them through Small Press Expo last year. I think what's going to help us through this 
really tumultuous period where artists are going to be shifting away from social media. I do think it's going to benefit artists in the long run to not be on social media anymore uh, and to pivot towards having their own websites, etc. Um, I'm going to put a pin in the subject of web rings. We'll circle back to that in a second. I do think that it would benefit artists in the long run to not be on social media and to be in community in other ways, whether that's in-person events or being on Discord servers or however that looks. Um, let's go back to the subject of web, web rings and uh, unpucker that sucker <laughs> from the pin board. Um, I think web rings are really going to be coming back because um, I've been noticing a lot of younger people people who are like younger than 35, which is not hard <laughs> to see. A lot of younger people have been making YouTube videos about, I left social media and I made my own website. And I really think that there's going to be a space for web rings to come back. And for folks who have no idea what that is, web rings were just a, a page on a website that's like, hey, check out these other people. Uh, these are my friends, or these are the creators that I really like, and it would link to their stuff. Um, also, web rings are like a official designated site that's like, we are a collection of creators, and here are our links. A really good example of that would be, oh gosh, it's not Hivemind, uh, Hiveworks, that's it. Hiveworks is one. I think Spider Forest, is, Spider Forest Collective. Wow, I'm getting tongue tied. Spider Forest Collective would probably count as one. Um, I actually applied to be part of Spider Forest, and they told me no. And I did not bother asking for feedback because I'm like, I feel like I know why you told me no, and I'm not going to apply again. And that's fine because clearly my work is not made for your collective, and that's okay. Um. I get, I get the vibe that the legend of Jamie Roberts is because the legend is made more for like readers 16 plus and a lot of the comics in the spider force collective are for like 10 plus <laughs> like they tend to skew younger in terms of readership. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too hurt that. Uh, the Legend of Jamie Roberts did not get accepted into the Spider Forest. I think that's fine. I have a direction in mind for the legend, and I don't want to change the direction uh, based on somebody looking at it and being like, this is too weird. And I'm like, well, too bad. I'm sticking with this direction because I know the end game for the story and I know where I want it to go. And I feel a little bit more like Hiromu Arakawa, the creator of Fullmetal Alchemist in that regard, where she definitely had that mentality with Fullmetal Alchemist, <laughs> the manga adaptation, to the point where uh, the original anime got to like episode 26 or something like that. It had caught up to the manga up to that point, and the anime creators came up to Arakawa and was like, do you want us to generate filler? Do you want us to work ahead? Do you want us to work off of your notes? What do you want us to do? And our car was like, take it in your own direction. I have a specific end goal for Full Metal Alchemist, and I don't want to stray for that. And they were like, done. So I really commend that, and I love that. I love that for our Kawa. And I get it. <laughs> I do. I really get it because I have a direction that I want the legend of Jamie Roberts to go. And I don't want it to stray from that direction. And I have a lot of faith or hope <laughs> in that story. <sighs> so that's where my mind has been at lately is just thinking about comic conventions, thinking about some of the stuff that I've been reading, thinking about where do I want to go from here, which just to reiterate, I'm not quitting conventions, but I am going to go about them differently. I'm not going to do pop culture or comic conventions anymore. They're just, they charge too much for their tables 
It's also really hard for me to get to a lot of them because I no longer own a car. So I would have to carpool with other creators or take a train or take a plane or a bus. And that takes a little extra coordination to handle. I would rather, though, have that extra coordination than have the headache of owning a car. <laughs> Part of the reason I, I sold the car was because I... I mean, I had had awful cars before, but there was just something about the 2010 Subaru Outback that I got that was a real money sink. And I was tired of being in debt to a hunk of rock that would only spew more chemicals into the air. And I was like, you know, I'm done with this debt. I'm done with the chemicals and I'm done with paying gas to these oil barons who are funding fake news. So I'm just going to nix my ties, sell my car, and in town, I'm going to take the bus or ride the bike, or if I really have to, borrow my roommate's car. But I can get most places by bike and bus nowadays. And with conventions, I've been carpooling a lot more to get to a lot of the shows that I've been going to. Uh, last year for SPX, I went by train, and that was fun. I'm going to do more train trips. Especially to Chicago, because Toledo has direct lines to Chicago and Pittsburgh and D.C. Not to Detroit yet. Uh, Amtrak and the government are talking about putting funding in place to develop lines from Detroit to Toledo and from Toledo to Columbus. Honestly, having a train line from Toledo to Columbus would be a game changer. I want this to happen. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just thinking about all of that. And I did apply for Genghis Khan Cleveland. And I actually applied with the intention of if I do get in... I'm going to share a table with my roommate, Alex, because Alex has never showcased there and she's actually never attended. So I think it would be a fun time. Um, and also Genghis Khan Cleveland is, yes, that is the name, Genghis Khan. Um, I love going to that show. Like I wasn't able to go last year because I couldn't figure out how to get there with no car, with the resources that I had at the time. Now I'm like, I have some ideas. So I applied for this year. I'm going to apply for the A2 CAF small and indie fair, which is in October, because A2 CAF has two fairs. One in June for kids in all ages comics, and one in the fall for small and indie presses. So I'm going to try for that one as well, because I had a great time at A2 CAF last weekend. I want to try to get into their fall show because they're fantastic hosts. I had a great time at this show and I bet it will be a great time at this one. And we'll see where it goes from there. Um, well, we've been going for about 23 minutes. I think I'm going to stop there for now because I have some comic pages that I really want to get to. I also want to do the final touches for this free fighting game RPG that I designed on a whim in a hurry. <laughs> I wanted to try to get this done in time for free RPG day this weekend. It looks like it's like 80 to 90% done. I just got to do like the final artistic touches to make stuff pop. But the rules are there. The foundation is there. At this point, it's just polishing up things before I run to the library tomorrow to make copies. <laughs> Because uh, I still don't have a printer. I'm figuring out how to get stuff together to get a replacement printer. I have been without a printer in my home since January. Because the one that I had broke. It stopped printing the color blue. And I did not figure out how to fix it. Because it's an HP printer. And HP has really embraced the late capitalist model of running off of subscription models and making you buy $200 printers once every two years. And I'm like, I'm done. 
I'm done. I'll figure out how to get a Epson EcoTank printer to replace that. Um, I was thinking about trying to sell it on Craigslist or something. I only had one person bite, and I don't think they got my response, so I just ended up taking the old printer to a recycling center to get rid of it. Still going to work towards getting a Epson EcoTank. I've been hearing very good things about them from other creatives. Um, Gary, another artist who's on my Discord server, uh, has an EcoTank and he's been saying very good things about it. Ben also has an EcoTank and he's been saying very good things about it. Even my mom has one and I'm like, really? <laughs> All right. So clearly... The Epson EcoTanks are doing something right. And even one of my patrons, Jessica, who works in tech, she's like, oh yeah, Epson EcoTanks are great. You should definitely get one. And I'm like, well, if a tech person is saying that it's good, then it's got to be good. Because getting high praise from a tech person is, like, rare. <laughs> Anytime that a tech person is like, oh yeah, get this thing, you kind of want to listen to it. <laughs> um, specifically somebody who works in, like, tech support or like the behind the scenes stuff on tech like don't don't buy the tech hype that you see on like i don't know fast company or whatever wherever people talk about like the latest gizmos like who gives a shit um so that's where my headspace is at right now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because i want to get to my <laughs> mango sparkling water and get to my comics um Especially since I have to go to my other job at five. So one of these one of these days, probably really soon, I'm going to quit that job. I'm gonna to try to line things up so that I can leave it sooner rather than later because oh boy. This part time job, I'm I'm taking it for the paycheck. Everything else about it is like it's not pleasant, <laughs> but that's a, that's a talk for a different day. I do think, I do think in the end, it's going to take a lot of working with other creatives and working together and supporting each other. And while I'm not going to go to pop culture and comic cons for the foreseeable future, except Rathacon, I do want to go to more zine fests and expos and art fests, but particularly zine fests and expos. For one, those spaces are a lot more queer friendly. And for another thing, I just feel like I'm going to find my people in those spaces a lot more. And I'm at a point where I want to find my people, basically. The people who have the same sorts of like value sets where they see comics as an art form and a storytelling medium and not as a collectible or a novelty. I would rather see people who regard comics as an art form and not like a super heavy duty art form. Like it doesn't have to be like Michelangelo levels of, you know, aesthetic or praise. Just, being able to look at a comic and say, this is great storytelling for this reason. Those are the kinds of people that I want to hang out with. So yeah, more zine fests and more comics expos. I'm hoping to hear back from the Pittsburgh Art Book Fair soon. We'll see how that goes. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for listening and take care of yourselves. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. You are awesome.